Hello, this is Mike of Mike Hickman Photography, and this is my review of the Tether Tools Case Air. A friend of mine knew I had one, and he was considering getting one. Knowing he takes enjoyment in backyard bird photography, I set mine up next to the bird feeder on my front porch. My gear that I used is the Canon 6D, paired with the Sigma 70-200 f2.8 EX APO DG OS HSM. For lighting, I used the Neewer Vision 400 watt second TTL strobe, and I plug the Tether Tools case air into the camera with a supplied USB. They make it compatible with most Canon and Nikon cameras, and connectors come standard with the device. I purchased the Tether Tools case air sometime in early 2017, and the price has been the same at $159.99 US. According to the product specs, the device connects to phone, tablet, or computer, has a wireless range of 150 feet, connects via ad hoc or wireless network, Compose image with live view and tap to focus. Control creative zones such as aperture, shutter, and ISO. Pinch to zoom to check critical focus. Bracketing, bulb timer, and focus stacking. Advanced time lapse shooting. Capture video, control settings, and monitor. Has a built in mounting option for hot shoe or secure with lanyard. And its size is 2.64 inches by 1.6 inches by 0.55 inches. Images can be downloaded to your mobile device for on-the-go editing and sharing. The Case Remote app can also utilize Live View, displaying a full-screen preview image, and includes a pinch-to-zoom feature to check critical focus after capture. The Case Air expected battery life is approximately 6 to 9 hours. One feature I personally enjoy is RAW and JPEG capture with Auto Download and RAW Download Ignore a feature I have used when working with models that I want to be able to view the photos on location without everyone having to crowd around the back of the camera's small screen. Of course, it downloads every photo, including misfires of the camera and lighting, along with missed focus, plus they are unedited, but you get the point. Turning on the case air, it creates its own Wi-Fi network SSID with a non-changeable password. So you connect it to your device, in this case, I'm using my iPhone 7 Plus. As you'll see in the first screen, there's already photos showing as I started screen recording after a few test shots. In the lower right hand corner is an icon of an eyeball in a square. By pressing this, it puts the device in live view and the camera screen will stay blank. You'll notice the live view image is a little choppy, so the delay could cost you the shot, but it still gives you a general view of your scene. By tapping on the live view, you will put the camera into autofocus. However, it relies on whatever focus point you have selected. In this case, mine is the center, so with nothing to focus on but the background, I lost my scene. What I didn't show in this video is the ability to manually focus the lens through the app. Rather, I chose to wait for a bird to land. By pressing the four arrow expand button, you can go full screen. Just be careful when pressing the screen rotate button, as when you go back to normal view, you'll be in whatever orientation you left the screen in. And there's my focus. By pressing the large round shutter button, you'll notice a short delay that will hinder your spray and pray tendencies. When you tap on a thumbnail, this will bring the photo to the viewing area. Tapping on the arrow to the left of the photo will produce a call out that allows you to see the EXIF data, download the file, in this case a raw file that can be edited, delete the file, view the histogram, and tapping the ellipsis will give you, well, I'm not sure, because I didn't tap on it. Also, tapping the M in the top left corner will give you individual controls over camera settings. At this point, I walked away from my hide, which was just inside my front door, to see how far I could get. And I made it about 25 feet before the signal was lost. But keep in mind, I was indoors with walls between me and the camera. Once disconnected, you will have to go back into your settings and choose the Case Air's SSID and reconnect to it. Once I gained focus, I made sure not to touch the screen again, and a tufted titmouse landed in view, and I was able to download the file and later edit it in Snapseed on my iPhone. By tapping the ellipsis in the top right corner, this gives you a slide out where default is selected, but you have the option to use bracketing, bulb timer, and the camera must be in bulb mode, focus stacking, time lapse, and movie, which I'm going to cover now. You'll need to adjust your settings for video, but once you're ready, pressing the red record button will start recording. A 
Again, the live view is a little choppy, but the video is perfectly captured. This video was shot at 1080p at 30 frames per second and is 80 megabytes in size. Going back to default, I then tapped the albums at the bottom of the screen that show the current raw files and video that was captured. I downloaded the 20 second video that took about 39 seconds. By tapping settings, you're presented with choices like raw download ignore and auto download, which are great options to avoid chimping. The overlay is good as it will show you what is in focus. All in all, I think this is a good tool to have. Do I use it all the time? No, but when I can't be near the camera or I need to view the images on a larger screen, it sure comes in handy. Happy shooting.